Okay, uh, hello and welcome to a live vlog. My name is Walter O'Neill. I run Antiques Arena. Um, I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, and anything that takes my fancy um, that I can flip for a profit. So the purpose of today's video is just a live vlog. Um, if you've got any questions, we'll uh, try and answer some of your questions. I've got a haul to share with you as well today and just a general chit chat. Before I get started, hopefully you can hear me. Bear with me a second. I've just had something come up saying so my device wouldn't recognize. So, well, if you can hear me, uh, or if there's a problem, just say there's a problem. Otherwise, I'll just assume you can hear me. Um, I'd like to thank Andrew and Sarah for popping up yesterday. Uh, sorry you missed me, uh, but thank you for coming for the print. Um, hello, uh, Anya. Hopefully you can give me a thumbs up and let me know whether you can hear me because I've just had a warning come up saying something wrong with my USB device. So fingers crossed it's all working. Anyway, I have bought a massive, massive haul of teddy bears and I'm going to share the teddy bears with you as well as one of the rarest things I think I've had in quite a while. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Anya. Fabulous. So, um, yeah, as you know, the shop is uh, closing down, but I'm not going out of business. I'm um, going online. So I'm still buying, and I have bought an absolute tump. I have bought a collection of Stith, uh, uh, Herman Bears, uh, some Dean's bears, some Canterbury bears, and a lot of other stuff. So I'm going to share all these teddy bears with you. And no doubt you're going to fall in love and see how cute they are and things like that. Um, so what I'll do in a moment, I'll just start showing some of the stuff. And if anybody got any questions, then you can jump in with a question. And we'll see if there's any questions going. Uh, but I have got plenty of stock to share with you today anyway. So we've already said hello to Anya. Ah. Thank you very much, Bettina Tucker. Hello, and M and M Collectibles, Antiques and Collectibles. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Bear with me. Hopefully you can hear me now. Two seconds. Audio default. One, two. Can you hear me now? I've had to revert to uh, the laptop. My uh, headset's playing up by the looks of it. Hopefully you can hear me. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I will get back to a Lowe's now in a minute. Okay, so I'll start that again. So Steiff is a German toy company founded in 1880 by Margaret Steiff. They were originally sold as pin cushions in magazines um, and they found that children were playing with them and then they started turning them into toys. Now, a paragraph from uh, Wikipedia, uh, this really rocketed the company. Steiff's nephew, Richard, joined in 1897 and gave the company an enormous boost creating stuffed animals from drawings made at the zoo. A 3,000 piece order was placed in 1903 by a buyer in America after the teddy bear craze began showing a cartoon with President Roosevelt and a young cub. So that's the story of uh, how Stife became so big. And they are seriously collectible. Some Stife bears sell for hundreds of thousands. Um, all the ones I've got now are relatively modern, but a really nice collection of bears. I'll get to the chat in a moment. I just want to show you a couple of the bears. I'm not going to show you all the stuff. I'm going to show you a couple of the stuffs in a minute, and then I'll get back and forth, and we'll get through them all. So we're going to start off with one of my favorites, to be honest with you. 
I will say the early stifes don't actually look like teddy bears. They resemble more real animals with long limbs and things like that. Now, this is an actual replica of a chimpanzee from 1928. It's produced in 1993. And stifes always come with a button in the ear. Well, I say they always come with a button in the ear. Sometimes you'll find a hole in the ear where the button was. And these modern ones are so easy to trace and value. Um, there's a code on the side of the thing here. Not this back one. This back one here tends to be the limited edition number. There's a code on the front here and you just type that in and it'll tell you everything you wanna know and show you every single one of these up for sale. So a really nice little 1993 replica of a 1928 chimpanzee. A chimpanzee it is, but their spelling is obviously not English. So that's the first. Now, I just will tell you first as last, the entire collection of teddy bears, I actually did fork out a bit of money. I've paid £180 sterling or $250 for this entire collection today. And I'm going to show you all the teddy bears before I move on to some of the other pieces. And I got one very rare grog. And I mean rare. So let's have a look at another one. This one comes with a growler. So, little the flowers are a little um, shabby, I think. Now, I'd actually done some research on this one on the internet. This one's called Springtime. And all the ones on the internet, I cannot find one with a chick. Now, the chick is stiff as well, because the chick has got his own button. So, the chick is stiff as well. Now, I'm left with two possibilities. Either somebody wanted to turn this into like an Easter bonnet bear, so they stitched a stiff chick onto the leg, or it actually came with the chick originally, and the ones I'm finding online are missing the chick. It could be either way. Um, but either way, the growler works, as you heard. The flowers just need pulling back in. They're just plastic flowers and tidying up. But there's no balding on any of the bears. They're all in absolutely spectacular condition. Uh, this one's even got its original tag and everything. And of course, it's got the button in the ear. Uh, Hello. And they are cute. And I intentionally non named them. So didn't want to get that part far. Uh, and I haven't shown Gracie Bell either. For those of you who want to know if my daughter has seen them, because <laughs> she would have stolen them. Uh, and so would Shannon. This one was, was a little uh, more unusual. Um, bear with me a second. This one was the Belgian beach bear. And it's, second, hang on, sorry. And it's oh, celebrating, obviously, the beach. And it's the triple B on the foot by Stif again. Um, I was actually going over to get the dates on them. I think this one was um, 99. Bear with me. 1998 Belgian Beach Bay, limited edition of only 1,500 of them made. Most of the stifes I have are limited edition. Um, even though I haven't got all the paperwork showing it, unfortunately. But as I said, if you search it off the tag, you can find everything you need to know and just take the information off the internet. If I show you some more, I'm going to get to the chat and just say hello to a few people, and then I'll get back to saying hello. Right, bear with me. So, right, so yeah, that was where I got quiet. So, the tap cave, hello. Uh, what's this? <laughs> Mrs. Upstairs, <laughs> you need to bring her downstairs because I've got a lot of teddy bears to share with you. And believe it or not, I've probably got another two dozen coming in this week. So I can't wait. I really can't. I love Stife. Hello, Tink Tink. Uh, Rebecca, hello. Uh, chips and gravy, hello. <laughs> Always make me hungry with that name. So... Yeah, uh, the stipes are beautiful, and to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to struggle to sell them. I've listed them on the website already, 
Now, I had no intention of actually making them public yet. I was doing the listings and I was saving them until the entire collection came in. Then I was going to do a big YouTube video on them and then publish them. However, being an empty, I was listing late last night and actually hit the um, publish button instead of the draft button. So we have another. Let me check out what this one is called. Bear with me. This one is the Chester Apricot Mohair Bay from 1996. Again, limited edition to only 2000, of which this number is 867. So as you can see, all the bays are in beautiful condition. The only thing I've got to do is they've been loved. Um, I've got to put up one of them rollers to take off hay because there is strands of hay on some of them. So they have been loved. They've obviously been in somebody's bedroom and loved. But the lady who brought them in have told me she has dozens and dozens and dozens, including a three foot tall one, which is coming in this week. So that's another stifey. This is my last of the stife. So you'll be pleased to know you can tell the missus to come back down now. <laughs> and this one is the Museum Bay. Uh, it comes with a porcelain plaque on the front. This one was 1999 Museum Bay, um, limited edition. And if I remember right, this was only sold to people who actually attended the museum. So you had to actually visit the museum in Germany to uh, actually buy one of these. There's the plaque. And it's in absolutely beautiful condition again. Honest to God, right, the eBay prices are that all over the place. There's prices on this bay from sort of £60 all the way up to £200 asking prices. They're all over the place. They really are. But it's a beautiful example. The only thing I haven't got with any of them is the boxes. But there's no wear on them. They are absolutely mint. So, you, you know, you can't ask to find a better bay. Okay. So, let me see. Just check that. Okay, so we're going to have a look next at Herman Bears, um, international producer of teddy bears based in Germany, founded in 1912. I've only got two Herman Bears. This one is the Green Leaves Annual Bear from 2000. What is this one? Uh... So this one has a growler as well. All the information I needed was literally on there. And again, you can see he's in beautiful condition. He's even got a button in the back of his head with these, with the Herman Bears. And they are cute. You've got to give it. So. Uh... You can see why people fall in love with them and collect them, can't you? So, yeah. Uh, that's the first of the Herman Bears. And then we had this one which was, bear with me, I'll get the name of this one for you. Two seconds. Summer Sunshine Bay. That's what this one is. However, this one, I think, has got a little bit of damage to the wicker but they, I think that there's a piece broke rather than uh, that being part of the design. And she would have had a pair of sunglasses originally. However, limited edition again of 2000, number 1184. They actually stitch it into the foot, the number. Other than the fact she's missing the sunglasses and she has that on the uh, bonnet, there's no other issues. She's absolutely beautiful. You don't see me doing teddy bears that often. I should do them. They're absolutely gorgeous. I can see why people buy them. Okay, what other ones were there? Okay, this one is, bear with me, a Canterbury Bay. So Canterbury Bays started in 1979 by British painter John Blackburn and still going now uh, with as a family-run business. And we have this one. These are all pretty much Moway Bays. Uh, comes with the label on the back, stayed in Canterbury. 
and limited edition on the other tag. Doesn't appeal to me as much as the uh, others, but it is a cute little bay nonetheless. And again, they've all been loved, but they're all in really nice, clean condition. As you can see, I had a teddy bear fetish this week. Um, right, Dean's. Okay, Dean's bears were originally called Cuddle Me Bears or Cuddle Me Toys. First Dean's Moe was introduced in 1922, and by 1930, it was a major part of their business. And I've got three of these. So I have two of the Millennium Bears, 2000. They are, they do have the labels on the foot and a label on the back, giving them the number. So they're limited edition again. So that's the first. This is another from 2000, but a different color, the same bear. And again, in good condition. And then we had this one, which was 1999 Hobson Bay. If this is a membership bay, so you have to be a member to actually get this bay. They've all got, um, is it articulated limbs or movable limbs? So I believe this one you have to be a member to have the bay. Um, but again, they're all in beautiful condition. And I got one bear left, which is a Merry Thought. And did I get the info on the Merry Thought bear? I think I did. Yes. Four generations of the finest teddy bears. Story of Merry Thought began in 1930 with William Gordon Holmes uh, of Yorkshire. Um, yeah. So. That's about it. Done in Yorkshire from 1930 onwards. Comes with the very thought tag. Not as exciting as the Stife and the uh, Herman, but still nice teddy bears, very collectible, all in clean, lovely condition. So I don't know what you think of them. That's the last of my teddy bears. So if you want to let me know what you think of those. <laughs> Gorgeous little things. And then I've got some more to show you. Yeah, this one is quite rare. Um, I don't know how many of you deal in grogs or know about grogs. Most of the grogs are, or they started out being of rugby players. Grog is a Welsh um, producer of ceramic figures produced in Pontypridd, which is about seven miles down the road from myself. And they started out doing all the rugby players, then they done footballers, and they pretty much do a bit of everything now, including, I remember one figure of Pavarotti selling for like eight, 900 pound. Um, well, this come into my shop this week, which is a Pudsey Bear, which is children in need. Now, the Grogs are always signed either John Hughes or Grog Shop Wales. So an absolute little rare beauty. Would you believe there isn't another one of these on the internet? Um, if you can find one, please send me the link. So I would love to know what they value them at. Now I, this came in and I paid 50 pounds sterling, which works out at about $70. And I have no idea of the value because I cannot find another sold. I can't find another up for sale, period. Can't even find them talking about them. Now I know the grog shop done special commissions, but you know, I love the fact it's about children in need anyway. So it's a charity, charity one. So they probably would have donated the um, profits off this bay to children in need, um, unless it was a one-off done for somebody. I don't know. It might have been done to be sold for the money to go to the charity. I have no idea. All I know is it's a grog from the grog shop in Pont de Prix and it's Pudsey Bay. And it is absolutely gorgeous and in perfect condition. And to be honest with you, in all the years I have been doing this, which is I started as a kid with my parents. So I've probably been going to car boot sales 
well over 30 years and I've been dealing for over 20 years and I haven't seen another. And the grog shop been down there since probably the 70s. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. If you think, uh, if you've seen one or got one, let me know. Because I would absolutely love to know evaluation. I haven't put this up for sale. Uh, and I'm not going to put it up for sale until I know what I'm doing with it. Purely because it's so unique and rare and people collect grogs now. It isn't just the rugby players and things like that. Hello, Ellen. I uh, love the bears. Know nothing about them, but they are super cool. Well, they're just gorgeous. And people collect them, obviously, because they're beautiful. The, uh, the names are a bonus, but they are just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and thank you. Okay, so moving on. Another local piece of history for myself. It's another one that isn't going up for sale at the moment until I figure out what I want to do with it because I may want to keep it. We have a miner's lamp. Now, this is a Welsh miner's lamp produced in Aberdeen, which again is about three, four miles up the road. It's produced by Thomas and Williams and it's a number one lamp, uh, pattern B136. Uh, they were doing this lamp in the 50s, but this one is dated on the side 1968. So it's, it's actually a dated lamp. You probably won't see it. Um, on the front, it is stamped LW, which I believe is Lady Windsor, which is the colliery my father worked in. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to sell it or keep it. Um, it's got a badge number 50 there, but the badge on top is 146. Uh, the idea of these, these were safety lamps. And when you went underground, you would take a lamp, normally the one corresponding to your number, you would leave your check or tally um, in place of the lamp. That way, if there was a collapse or anything like that, they knew exactly who was underground just by looking at the tallies on the wall. Hence the safety lamps. Plus, they would stop any explosions underground because there was no open naked flames. But yeah, this is a really, really rare lamp. Now, I've actually paid a bit of money for it again. I paid £50 sterling, but $70 again. Um, but I can tell you now, people are asking £100 for, you know, reproduction Thomas and Williams, Thomas and Williams lamps, or a lot later lamps, let's put it that way. Um, it has got one or two issues. This bar is bent here, which isn't the end of the world. You could straighten it up, take it off and straighten it up. Other than that, it's a little worn on the brass plate. But no, it seems to be pretty good. And it is an absolute corker. But this is, as I say, local history for myself. If it is the Lady Windsor, I'm going to have to double check, but I think it is. If it is Lady Windsor, then uh, my father actually worked in that mine. So it might be one for me to keep. Everything you want to know is actually stamped on them. Thomson Williams, the number one. Uh, the B136, everything's all on them, so it's relatively easy. But a beautiful bit of history, and yeah, what am I going to do with it? I don't know yet. Haven't decided. But the grog and the lamp, neither of those are up for sale yet, and they won't be anytime soon, uh, purely because of what they are. Okay, I went down to Splot car boot sale. For those of you in America, a car boot sale is exactly that. You call it trunk, we chuck everything in the back of our car, drive to a location, sell it out. Um, these are organized events, regular, no, most of the time. And my local car boot sale, I've been having a lot of house clearance vans of late. I don't know if it's because the antique fairs haven't been running or what, but the house clearance vans are turning up at my car boot sales and they are giving stuff away. And um, this is a fine example. So I'm going to start off with the uh, pair of fire dogs. So we have, I would assume it's a German eagle, but I could be wrong. Um, but I would think the German eagle in solid brass. Now, there's no stamps or maker's marks or numbers or anything on these at all. Put your going down. They are really nice quality and they're solid brass. Now, a lot of the time you'll just get a brass front with iron backs, uh, but this is all brass and they have a fair weight to them. 
but I didn't just buy these. I picked up the entire companion set as well. Now this, again, would normally be brass handle and iron, all the rest of it, but it's not. The entire thing's a solid brass. And we have the poker. The tongs are absolutely beautiful. And I would assume they got a bit of age. We have a second poker. Now they all match because they got the same tops. So we got a second poker with this sort of pull. It's just really unusual to have them all as heavy brass. Even the shovel end, it's all brass. That's why I don't think I've ever had a set that's been full brass. And it's got to be somewhere between 5 and 10 kilos of brass between the fire dogs and all these. Uh, the companion set and the dealer I walked up to him with it all in my hand asked him the price and he told me £10 which is less than $15 for it all there's got to be 20 to £30 of scrap brass here got to be um, and it is absolutely stunning quality so it's definitely it's not up on the website yet but it will be up on the website it's just a really nice heavy quality solid brass set now i know they're not as popular as they used to be because people don't have open coal fires and things no more but you know if you've got a pub a public house or something like that they look spectacular next to a big massive stone fireplace because they're brass they look impressive a lot more impressive than just iron ones and that's where i think these lend up is in a big public house or something like that they're absolutely gorgeous But for a tenner, they were um, they were a gift. And to be honest with you, I'll, a lot of the stuff I've been having lately has been off the house clearing sky. And the stuff I see coming out that I don't get, and I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the dealers uh, local to myself was at the same car boot as myself in Gatley Gay. The house clearance boy came and he bought an enamel railway sign. And it was one of the selector signs from inside the train, so a thin one and it would flip down to change the destination. And this one was the central line. Paid four pounds for it, so about $6, and sold it for 280 pounds in, I think it was about three days, three, four days. It was not long, um, and you worked that out, which is about $450 for a four pound investment. That's how uh, good the car boot sales have been around here lately. It's, they've been spectacular. And it's all because the house clearance fans have been coming here instead of going to the antique fairs. Uh, so what we got you? Ah, chips and gravy. I picked up the other day an Eccles is the maker. Yeah, that's English, if I remember right. Um, around you, we all want Welsh. But um, yeah, depends where you are and where you're selling to. I suppose everybody wants the area they live in. Uh, tea cakes got to be German. That's the teddy bears. Definitely German teddy bears are. Let's be honest, they're um, second to none. And I love the growlers and the sound and just yeah. If my daughter actually got a hold of these teddy bears, I would lose the lot. So they're not going home. Um, I'm gonna give them a little um, going over with the uh, hair roller. Make sure there's no hairs on them. Make sure they're all spotless and clean, and they'll be wrapped up, sealed, airtight. And packed away in a box unfortunately and they will live in a box i don't know if any of you have seen toy story but you know where they're terrified of going in the box well that's where these are going in a box until they're sold and where are we well hello and thank you very much i hope the weather's better for you over the other side of the pond than it is you because it is hammering down i didn't go to a car boot sale this morning um, because of the weather, plus I had the baby. Night's life. Hi. Uh, thank you very much. Hello to you. <laughs> there you go. Fire dog. Is that just the fire dogs, or is that with the iron, uh, the brass pieces as well? Oh. 
or is that just the, the Eagles? I'd be interested to know because I haven't looked. I haven't done the research myself. Okay, so I'm going to move on to some more pieces. So we have, <laughs> it's not a Tiffany lamp, it's a Tiffany style, um, a reproduction of a Tiffany style lamp. Um, Lewis Comfort Tiffany obviously done the originals worth thousands and thousands. This is, it is all stained glass, but they are reproductions, but they look spectacular when they're lit and they are not cheap either. They're really not. I gotta tighten it up. Obviously, she took the shade off when she shipped it down. I haven't put it back on tidy. Got to be careful they don't actually fall off. But this is, this one's got raised roses. I don't know whether you can see it, but they're actually not flat to the glass. They're actually like roses put on to the glass. Now, normally you just see them flat and it's jeweled. So this is an exceptional lamp. Now, I've been buying off um, one lady for quite a while. She's been bringing stuff to me just to have it cleared. And I actually, she actually said to me, I got a lamp, I got this, I got this and this. And I just threw prices off the top of my head without seeing anything. She brought them down. I had a shop full. I didn't even look at stuff, just handed the money over. Uh, and this lamp owes me £25. <sighs> to be honest with you, what I was expecting was a standard plainish lamp with maybe a couple of bits of colour and pattern. I didn't expect it to be the one with the raised roses and the jewels. So I've done very well. £25 is you know, $40, give or take. Um, and it is a beautiful, beautiful lamp. It's probably going to get kept, to be honest, though. Um, I'll probably keep this one for myself just because it's so nice. And I'll put it in my office um, when the office is built. That's exciting. I don't know how many of you uh, saw the vlog I done when I told you all I'm shutting the shop down. But it's not all bad news because the planning permission has been granted for my premises at home. I should have the plans on you. I wonder if I could show you the plans. Bear with me. Um, a friend, I say friend, met him on YouTube um, a few years back and we became very friendly. Uh, Steve and his wife, Natalie. And he drew the plans up for me, he came down and actually drew the plans up for me. So the plans are all fine. The plans are actually all drawn up. Get off it. So Steve done the plans for me. He didn't even charge me. Uh, fair play. He was absolutely fabulous. He didn't want nothing for doing them. He came down. He was absolutely brilliant. Come all the way down to my home, measured up, done everything. It's going to be a simple build. All there is is four walls and a roof, but it is absolutely massive. Uh, the measurements that we've got are 36 foot by 15 foot uh, by 10 foot. I think it's 10 foot. Um, so as you can imagine, we'll go out to 36, 36 by equals 540 square foot just for an office so and that's all been been approved so to be honest with you giving the shop up isn't a bad thing because i'm saving a lot of money because to run the shop here you have to realize it's the rent it's the commercial utilities gas electric water sewage um the insurance uh you name it, it's everything. It's a fortune to run the a shop in a main street. And up until COVID, it's been absolutely fabulous. But then I've also been very ill, and I thought, you know, what do I want? Do I want to sit in the shop six days a week, or do I want an office to work from home and just spend my time out buying? So I weighed everything up. It wasn't just one thing or the other, but the shop has been terrible since um, this COVID. My um, Even people who used to come regularly to the shop are buying off me online. So I haven't really lost all the customers, the customers have just reverted to online buying off me. So that's what I've done now. And yeah, I'm going to be working. I'm going to be building that soon. I've only got four weeks or so left in the shop here. And then I'm going to be concentrating on building that. And I am going to film it. When it's, you know, it's going to be at regular updates and things showing the build coming through. And then once this built, I'll show you uh, kitting it out because I'm going to have areas. I'm probably going to have a little showroom area in it too. 
um, and you have storage, an office, a showroom area, and um, a little filming area where I can have a permanent setup and do my regular films because I'm going to do a lot more films and I'm going to do a lot more where I travel out and do the films. So, because I'll have a lot more time because I'm not stuck in a shop, I can get in a car, drive up to Gloucester, wherever, and do a full day out and do vlogs all the way through the day, film where I buy. And because I'm not going to my local boot sales, hopefully mount a, a camera on me and film actually buying it. My local car boot sales won't allow me. The dealers know me and have asked me not to film them. And with Gethley Gear, uh, Barbara has told me straight, if I film, I can ban from the boot sale. That's why I don't film. It's not about hiding what I pay, because believe me, if uh, I started lying about what I'm paying, everybody watches my channel, they'd soon be saying. Right then, so where are we at? Ah, Natasha. Thank you very much. Ah, so it's 45 just for the uh, Eagle Fire Dog. So that's all right. Um, when you consider I paid a tenner for the entire thing. I've seen what Satsuma Immortals are selling for on eBay. I haven't got a clue, but I don't really buy Satsuma. Uh, the price has been so low on Satsuma that I never buy it. But we'll have a look. If I screen share, let's have a little look. See, is it? Let's have a look, Sian. Well, that's an asking price. Let's go to sold prices, because I wouldn't have thought it would have been four tunes and we'll go highest price. Let's have a look, see what it is. Let's take away the porcelain. It's just going to start doing with mortals. Well, that's good money, because a vase like that normally would be less than a third of that. So that might be a good tip for you to start looking at Japanese porcelain. Um, everybody buys Chinese porcelain anyway, but uh, we tend to not bother with the Japanese. But it is clearly pulling some money. And to be honest with you, if I saw this at the car boot sale, I wouldn't even pick it up. That's that sort of moirage where, where it's got that thick enamel um almost like beaded work in enamel um and to be honest with you, i don't pick that stuff up even um but obviously i'll have to know if it's what did i sell for 100 asking but you never know hmm, fair enough so okay so yeah we see what satsuma's pulling and it's obviously gone up <laughs> angela you have uh, one of those lamps nice Can keep hold of it because uh, the ones with the jewel in and the raised roses are the higher priced ones. Uh, they are expensive. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Nice lamp. What we got? I found a 385 pound Woodford carriage clock. I'm not going to try to shop for £4.50. Well, hello, Rebecca. Um, I'm not familiar with Woodford. Not familiar with them, but sounds like a cracking deal. Let's have a quick look a minute. Bear with me. Let's turn that back on. Let's have a look at them. Because I'm I'm not familiar with them. Price. Oh, well, there you go. They're up a thousand pound. Asking prices. Anyway, that's not sold prices. I'd have bought the carriage clock anyway. Any carriage clock with a name on it, I would buy, but I weren't familiar with the name. But yeah, that's nice. Wonder what they're selling for. Let's have a look. It's handy, uh, you know, when people tell you uh, different names. Highest price. Yeah, it's not on the sold list, but there's plenty on the asking. So that was a nice uh, thing. Well done. Well found. Got a fly around. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, have a look at the rug I bought the other day. Uh, Fiverr for a Iran rug. 
tribal rug beautiful thing uh, what we got here the pandemic has made retail arbitrage very profitable i just sold two tins of pellets 19 the trouble is everybody's gone online that's why i'm shutting the shop um honestly um i sold a brooch to a lady that lives not half a mile from the shop and she refused to come into the town center and she refused for me to deliver it i literally had to post it for a half a mile journey and i could have literally walked to it and posted it and saved the four quid um and that was the final straw i think when customers who want to buy off me were just buying it off my in my website and things and saying i don't want it delivered that i want it sent in the mail and that was it everybody's just going online the trouble is because people have been been forced to do it um people have always had a choice to go online possibly find a better bargain find it cheaper and things like that but people are reluctant they didn't want to go online you know, a lot of people like myself, they like to go in, handle the goods, look at the goods, and then decide themselves whether they want them. Uh, you ain't always sure what you're going to get off a photograph or off somebody else's description or representation. Um, however, they've been forced to over the last 12 to 18 months, and they've learned that they not only can save a bit of money by going online, they can find and have access to things they couldn't. So now they're actually getting a taste for it, and then they stick into it. Um, I have found my my footfall here, honest to God, some days, well, in fact, Friday is our market day. And I actually went outside on Friday and took photographs. And I'll share with you the photographs and I'll show you the time stamp on them. It was Friday morning and it was about nine o'clock, somewhere over there. And the market opens at six. So you would expect the town to be quite busy. Have I got on here? Should open. Bear with me. Yes. That was our town centre. And that's the other direction past my shop. And if I show you the timestamp, can you do a timestamp? There you go. If you look at the top there, you can see the time was 20 to 9. And when you consider the market say from six in the morning people should be arriving eight o'clock you know i'm here for eight o'clock they should be coming here there should be people out in the street it was empty tumbleweeds were rolling past and that just sums it up and it's not just then i've done vlogs before where i've done photographs almost every hour throughout the day now the council they send me footfall uh emails tell me how many footfall come through the town and i don't know where they're getting their figures but they're getting figures of like two hundred thousand coming through the town center Honest to God, if I'd done my figures, it'd be like 200 a, uh, a week, if you're lucky, walking through the town centre. Probably less than that. So the only thing I can think of is they count in every car that drives through as four people. <laughs> or count in everybody who gets off the train from work and walks straight up to the bus, day, bus stop and straight on the bus on home. That's the only thing I can think of, because they clearly are not coming into the town. Anyway, let me get back to some more of my haul. I don't know how much more I'll stay on. I've got plenty to show you. Mom, but uh, Anyway, same lady as the lamp said to me, I have two pigeon clocks. Now, pigeon clocks are basically timing clocks. You take a clock to the, um, the club where you fly your pigeons. They put a ring on the pigeon. It would fly. They take it away. It fly back. You take it off, put it in the box. It'd be locked and it would time stamp it. Uh, so you'd know how long your pigeon took to come home. And I have got two of these time clocks. This one. I'm not even going to go try and pronounce it all. So, and you would then put in the little ring that you cut off the pigeon's foot by there. And it would literally time stamp the, um, the ring. So I've got two of them just, and it's time stamped. As simple as that. So that's the first. And then I had this one comes with a basket. Now the lady want, well, asked me what I'd give and I didn't really want them. Because um, the last I saw, pigeon clocks were worthless. Uh, they really were. However, I've had some cracking stuff off her. The Thomas Williams lamp come off her. I've got 
Guinness memorabilia. I've got ceramics, everything out there to film that have come off it. I haven't even filmed yet. Um, so I said to her, I'd actually buy them at a tenner each. I didn't want them. Um, she was more than happy to give them to me for a tenner each, which is about $14, $15. They're both in working order. Same maker on them both. Um, they're not going to pull fortunes. I would think they're probably get worth about £30, £35 each, about $50 each, something like that. But they're so slow to sell. Um, but they are in good condition, and I like the basket, to be honest with you. I'll probably sell the basket separate to the two clocks, because I'll sell the clocks, and I'll probably get as much for a basket as I will for the clocks, for somebody who's already got a clock. Go figure, in it. But they were all right. But pigeon clocks are not the most desirable anymore. Let me tell you that. <laughs> well, hello, Wayne. Uh, will I not miss the lucrative drop in to sell? Yes, massively. Um, I have, on average, about 10 to 12 people a day bring things in to me to buy. And I only buy off one or two of them. Um, I'm very picky on what I buy. To be honest with you, 90% of ceramics and glass these days is not wanted unless it comes in for next to nothing. It's very hard to sell. Um, people don't want it on the shelves. You have to have something a bit special to be able to sell it and make a profit on it. So like these stife and uh, you know the Deans and the, the other teddy bears, they all come in. I'm over the moon with them. The Tiffany lamp, beautiful, you know, the Grog, Thompson Williams lamp, things like that. I will buy seven days a week. I've also, as you know, I've had gold holes come over the shop. Um, you know, one year, I think it was about two years ago, one woman came in with like three or four suitcases of jewelry, costume jewelry and things, giving me a price of something like 400 pounds, like 1500 pounds worth of gold by the time I dug through it. Um, so yeah, I will miss very much the people bringing stuff to me because you cannot find something like that grog or the lady wins a lamp would come out of a car boot sale, but they wouldn't be at a car boot sale for more than a minute because the first person to walk past them is going to buy them. They're not going to be on the store for more than a minute. So to find someone like that, the car boot sale is seriously difficult. Same with the stuff. Yet when they come to the shop here, there's no competition. They come in, I give them my offer, they take it or they leave it, end of, or they knock me up a bit. Um, so that's going to be the hardest thing. But I am considering leaving adverts in the local news agents and things like that. And I've been giving my customers my card and things. So if they still want to sell, uh, the regulars who've been selling to me, they can still sell to me privately. It isn't always got to be bringing down the shop. So yeah, I will still be buying off off the uh, public but i'm gonna miss it a lot where people just clear the house um and they just want to get what they can for the stuff that's going to be a big big pain losing that but at the same time when you go into a car boot sale and house clearance boys are coming in and selling you um you know stuff like that companion set for a tenner you know i don't know how many of you saw the charger i bought um a few weeks ago let me show you the charger hang on bear with me I was in Gethley Gay Car Boot Sale again, and the um, house cleaners boy turned up, same one I've been buying a lot of the stuff off, and he turned up with this, which is 19 inches, it's hand painted, and I still have not figured it out. Um, I asked a few Facebook groups, some said it was Hispanic uh, Morsk, which is when the Moors invaded Spain, and then you had some Islamic influence uh, on the Christianity side. Um, so they said it might have been from that area. Another one said it could have been Italian. And my final one has been French, France. Um, but he charged me a tenner for this. This is tin glazed majolica. It's in beautiful condition. And at the moment, the concisus is, is the first half of the 20th century. But again, we still don't know. But the painting is absolutely superb. But when you can buy something like that for a tenner, how much am I going to miss sitting in the shop six days a week uh, dealing with customers who come in who want to buy everything for a pound? Because let's be honest, since the invention of bargain and, and the antiques road trips are worst, where they come in, 
and you might have hundred pound on it and they offer you a fiver, but the public think they can do exactly the same. I don't know how many of you have that, but they come in and might have 30 or 40 pound on something and they're starting off at like a fiver. And I think myself, calm, be polite and professional, <laughs> but what you want to do is literally kick them through the door. Um, this stuff is so hard to buy. Um, well, they don't realize, yes, we make it up and pay a 10 or something like this that could be worth potentially hundreds. Um, but it's the 20 years of experience. It, you don't say to an electrician uh, when he comes into your house, I'm not paying you 70 pounds to change that bit of wire. You know, the wire is like a pound's worth. Because it's the six or eight or 10 years they've done studying to be an electrician. It's all the effort and the time and the experience not killing themselves with electric. It's the same with us. We got car boot sales or wherever we go, we get up at like three, four in the morning. We do years and years and years of crawling around in the dirt and junk under tables looking for real quality gems and treasures. Um, so if I buy something for a few pounds, that's my knowledge has done it. You want it for a few pounds, you go and dig under the tables. But yeah, the Antiques Road Trip has got a lot to answer for. Talking about that, they asked to come to my shop um, about four weeks ago. And I said, no, they wanted me to close the shop down for filming and everything. And no, weren't interested. Okie dokie. Right then. Same lady that the lamp and the pigeon clocks come off. We have a pair. So there are two. Highland cattle scene prints or live graphs. I haven't had a good look at them yet. They literally they come in and they were plonked over by there. They could be live um, or prints. They're not watercolours. I have confirmed that at the very least, but they did look a lot like live They're certainly not no modern dot printed. Um, so Highland cattle, seriously collectible. Uh, the frames themselves are really nice quality frames. Now, I've paid a tenner each. She broke the glass on this one. Um, unfortunately, there we go. So she broke the glass on that one. So I got to have a new piece of glass put in there. So that's going to cost me 10, 20 pound before we start. But a really, really nice pair of Highland cattle scene prints or live ores, live graphs. The live graph is still a print, it's just an earlier version. But for £20 or $30, um, I would think framed up, you know, they've got to be close to £9,500 the pair. If you add paintings, you know, you're talking 10 times that. So just to have them as decoration on the wall with those frames, they're a nice, colourful Highland Cattle print, you know, they got to be worth sort of 40, 50 pound each, aren't they? Got to be. You know, you wouldn't buy the frames for that if you wanted to turn the frames into mirrors or pictures. Um, so, let me see. Um, is there anything else I want to show you? I'll show you these. This is the last lot I'm going to show you, and then I'll call it there. Bear with me. I actually didn't want them. This lot have come in, and I didn't actually want it. Still a profit on there, but it's not my thing. So I have a selection of Native Americans or American Indians, whatever you want to call them, um, by N. Rose. I think it's Neil Rose. They're all dated and they're all limited edition. However, they're all also resin. And to be honest with you, I do not buy resin. But the lady with the stife brought them in with the stife. Wait, I'm looking for the signature on this one. She brought them in with the stife, and I can't find that one. Bear with me. And I didn't want to turn her away. Um, at the end of the day, there's a good profit on the teddy bears. So I bought them. Unfortunately, she actually thought they were wood. She paid an absolute fortune for these, apparently, years and years ago. They're limited edition. This one's a fire wolf made in America. Well, it's got two addresses. It's got an American address and an English address, Stoke and Trent. So, either way. 
So you got that one. I don't know whether I showed you this one or not. I can't remember. Again, all stamped up and signed. Right on by resin. And then there's this big one. But I, I didn't want to turn her away because the stuff she's been bringing in has been spectacular. So I thought, do you know what? She wants £20 from, I give her £20. And they're going to go on a car boot sale. I'll probably make double my money probably after the fuss of selling them. Um, but if you look on eBay, this one is like £100 or something like that. But I just don't want them. Uh, they're not my thing at all. I may even just chuck them in the shop here and see if somebody likes Indians. But they're all signed. They're all limited edition. But they're all resin. But I bought them because I wanted to keep the lady happy because the way she's bringing stuff into me has been spectacular. Right, let me... What we got here... Yeah, we must be talking about bargaining on the antiques road trip. Uh, all the shows are pretty much staged. Sellers want to look good and generous. And believe it or not, it's not worth the advertising. Um, I watched the antiques road trip and that uh, road trip, and literally the shop gets like a half a second on the screen. That's it. Um, okay, you may get some screen time, but in all honesty, if I was interested in that, I just make more YouTube videos. And there's Dorothy uh, sending love to you in Ohio or wherever you are at the moment. Um, one of my longest supporters, uh, along with Steve and Natalie, been with me since I had a few hundred subs. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's okay. Sell, selling some sheds for your dad, hopefully. Um, how do I value things? A lot of the time... It is experience where I just have an idea in my head what I'm willing to pay. I don't always know what it's worth. I just know what's a safe amount to pay. So the grog come in. I knew the grog is going to be three figures plus minimum. Um, so offering £50 wasn't a problem. Did I know what it's worth? No, I don't have a clue, but I know I'm not going to get less than £100. And the likelihood is it could be two or £300. Um, what I tend to do, I don't see really value things when I'm out and something gets offered to me. I just think, is it a safe number? Um, certain things you know the value of, but to be honest with you, the values change every single day of things. Um, one way of doing it, obviously, is to go on your phone, look at sold prices on eBay, not asking prices, and get an average of the sold prices. But the things I like to buy and sell, a lady wins a lamp, you're not going to find another. You can look anyway. You're not going to find another from Lady Windsor Colliery. Uh, the Grog, I've already told you that that is the only one I can find for sale worldwide. Well, it's not even for sale. It's the only one I could, I could find worldwide. Can't find another. So when you're buying things like that, you can't really go online and value them. Now, you can do Google image search. So you can take a photograph of something and let Google find it for you and then find out what they're selling it if you're um, just beginning or you don't know how to identify things. Um, but I find the best way to do things is to look at it, uh, look at the amount of work gone into it, look at the quality, look at the name, is it got a good name, and what's a safe number? And then when you get home, do the full research when you get home by searching eBay or other internet sites. And as long as it's a safe number, you ain't going to lose no money and potentially you can make hundreds of pounds and be happy when you get home. But if it's a safe number, you're not really going to lose anything. And my safe number tends to be what I can outdate to another dealer know where I'm willing to pay. I do think what is a ridiculous number that I might, if I can't sell it, would have to knock it onto the trade, that the trade can't say no at. That's my ridiculous number. My ridiculous number is not, let's say for argument's sake, something's worth 200 pound, my ridiculous number might not be 50 pound. Um, if someone says to me at a car boot sale, well, I want 35 pound for this, I'll think, can I, will another dealer buy it at 35 pound? That's how I tend to work. That's the best advice I can give you, to be honest with you. Um, because if you can't sell something, you never know. One day you may find that you need money. And I've been in that predicament a few times where I had to let some spectacular things go. Uh, when I was buying my last house, I needed to raise 15000 for the deposit because the um, mortgage company wouldn't put a, the full mortgage on there. Um, I was having an 80% mortgage, and they came up with problems, and they withheld another 15000 I had to let gold, silver, antiques go, fine art that I'd been hoarding as my pension, and the prices I let it go at was less than I paid for it. So 
the best way you can do it is what's a crazy number that you think no deal is going to walk past it and that's the number you want to be paying unless it's something you know what you're doing if you're a specialist in a subject or you've sold many of them like i give you the tip the other week of the small miners lamps the thompson williams miners lamps they sell them for two or three hundred pound on ebay if you see that for 50 pound on a boot sale you you know you're crazy to walk past it if it's a rock solid item that you know 100 percent fine rather than that just be careful just use your own judgment what you think is a safe number and then when you go on do the research and find out exactly what it's worth because that's what i tend to do there's no way you're going to know what everything is worth there's things you're going to deal with on a regular basis but they are even if you just look at glass there's probably a hundred thousand two hundred thousand different manufacturers of glass and then you got two thousand years worth of glass making to consider um whether it's 18th century whether it's roman whether it's 1960s doesn't matter there's so much you just can't know it all so you just gotta look at the item assess whether you want it assess what you think is a safe number and then pay that and then do the research when you get home that's my that's my um advice on that yes i saw F sully boot sales opening uh, on the 15th unfortunately i very rarely go to sully sully car boot sale is on the cricket grounds um down near barry and it is absolutely spectacular and it goes all the way down to the seafront and you get hundreds and hundreds of stalls but my local gethley gear car boot sale is for me one of the best car boot sales around there's no traveling i buy gold there i buy silver there and i've had some serious antiques come out of there over the years that charger that i showed you earlier come out of there for a tenner i i can't justify traveling to sully which is a bigger area, which is close to Cardiff, which means all the dealers are there. Gethley Gay is a smaller boot sale, but less dealers. Hello, Pleasant Valley Picker in CA. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, I was on Dickinson's Real Deal when I worked as a porter at an auction house. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I've seen some of the stories from Dickinson's Real Deal. And to be honest with you, when that started up, um, I was friends with a few dealers around here and we all got offered to go on the show. or well, they wanted to meet us to go on the show as dealers to buy and none of us were interested. Um, so yeah, I can imagine some of the stories, to be honest with you. Some people around here probably call me crooks, but I tell you what, have you tried to buy a standard piece of ceramic and sell it on? It is not easy. So if it don't come in cheap, I really don't want it. They may look at on the eBay. I, I'm fed up a year in, oh, well, on eBay is worth this. Um, but have you tried selling on eBay? It is hard, hard work. So and it could take years to find a, a buyer if you want to hold out for your money. So yeah, if it don't come in cheap, I don't want it. Yes, I know it's Amish made sheds. Um, no idea how you get on with your own um, little antique shop. That's prob probably been put on hold with your dad not being well. Um, but thank you. Honestly, I can't thank you enough. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, believe me, every day is a school day for me and all. Do you know the one thing I'll say about the shop? That my biggest why I'm most grateful for the shop is it forced me out of my comfort zone. Um, when I go to car boot sales, I buy what I know is safe or what I can make a profit on. Um, I used to do the odd gamble, but more often than not, I would only buy stuff that I could knew I could flip. And when you're only doing that, you're playing it safe, you're not really learning. And from the second I've had the shop, which is not far off three or four years now, um, you're being brought in things and you don't have a clue. And in the beginning, I was having to say to people, we're going to have to leave here for an hour for me to do some research on it and find out what it is and what it's worth. Um, and it put me out of my comfort zone. And I would say now I am 10 times the dealer I was four years ago because I've been forced to learn so much more myself. I still get it wrong. I still buy fakes. I still get caught. Um, but I'm a lot more knowledgeable now than what I was four years ago. And that is all thanks to the shop. Uh, where people have brought things in and, you know, I didn't know what they were and I had to learn. Yes, I can run a small antique shop in my house. Um, I am considering putting a um, showroom in my build, in my new build. 
Um, but it'll be by appointment only or for people, you know, if they see the videos, they want to come and have a look around a few specific things. But more often than not now, it's going to be on the website. The website is really going well to the point where I haven't listed on eBay in six months, seven months. Slowly but surely, my eBay is going, the shop is going, so my fees are going to be dropping by crazy amount of money. Uh, and I'm, I'm serious, it's a crazy amount of money to run the town centre shop. But it was being covered by the fact that I was selling and buying and had an office. So it really was worth it at the time. But yeah, I'm in, actually in the middle of writing a blog on what it was like to start up a shop, own a shop, run a shop, what you can expect, things like that. I'm actually in the middle of writing a blog on all that. Um, so it's going to be a massive, massive blog talking about my experience with having a shop, uh, how to set up your own if you want one, looking at the expenses. There's a lot of hidden expenses you don't realize. And I don't just mean like insurance and things like that. Um, you know, till rolls. And it's everything. Little price tags, everything. It all really adds up fast. All the hidden costs you don't realize. Then you've got to look at advertising. Otherwise, you don't get no one in. So, yeah, I'm doing a blog at the moment, and I'm going to cover all of that. But it's going to take me a while to write. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a really interesting blog. If anybody wants to start up, you know, like a, in an antique mall or set up their own antique store, things like that, I'm actually going to do a massive, massive blog on that. Um, so but I'm also going to turn it into a podcast. I'm going to start doing podcasts, uh, so people can listen to the blogs rather than reading them. So that's where we're at. So unless there's any questions, I'm going to pretty much end it there. Um, I can't think of anything else. I've got plenty more stock here, but I think I'm happy enough uh, with what I've uh, shown. Let me close these down. Uh, where are we at? Oh, I totally agree about Gethy. Yeah, I've tried it the last three weeks and it's been really good. The last three weeks, believe it or not, the weather hasn't been great and Gethy has been one field. Normally, they have two massive farm fields full of sellers and two fields full for buyers. So four fields in total, you can imagine how big it is. But you get the odd house clearance van, but more often than not, it's public, general public. And you can get some really, really amazing things. Have you ever bought antique tiles? Yes, I've actually got Majolica tiles in the shop. Hang on, where are we? Ten years ago, you used to get £100 for a Majolica tile. I'll show you how much they are now. Let me take that off the screen. A Majolica tile now is £7 to take a fiver. Unless you got a Minton or um, Della Robbia. No, what's the one I'm thinking of? Oh, I can't think now. There's one really big name. You can get Martin Brothers tiles. There's one big name I'm trying to think of. Can't think of it. But unless you get a spectacular name behind them now, the value is gone on tiles. But I used to, a tile like that would be a time you'd get close on £100 sterling, which would be about $140, $150. But um, the price has dropped out of them. As, unless it comes with a really good name, the price is gone, unfortunately, even with good designs. And these are all Art Nouveau designs. Um... So you can see the prices I'm selling for, £7 to take a fiver. And there was a day I used to buy tables and washstands with tiles in the back. I'd pay £100 for a washstand, take 10 tiles out of it and sell them £100 a tile. And then chuck the washstand in recycling. <laughs> if that's how crazy tiles did go. But um, yeah, the price has gone totally with, um, gone with them now. Uh... And yeah, can't wait for the blog. It's going to take me a few weeks because it's massive. Um, I've been breaking it down already. I have started, but it's going to take me a long time because I want to try and cover everything. Um, the pros and cons, the costs. I'm going to also do a comparison because I've also had units um, in antique centers and things like that. And I'm going to do a comparison how what it was like to sell there versus costs and vice versa with the shop here. Uh Ellen, thank you very much. Uh, you sent me a picture of a planter. I will try and get to that. Uh, 
you know, you'd have to log on to my um, site. The trouble is I get so many people saying I've emailed you. Um, in fact, while I'm on the subject, somebody contacted me this week on my eBay channel and bought a few pieces off me asking for my email on my eBay. I haven't replied to you and I can't reply to you because the second I send you my email through eBay, my account is suspended. So if anybody writes to me on eBay, please don't think I'm being rude. I cannot answer you. Um, eBay take that as trying to sell outside of eBay and they suspend your account instantly. So if you want to get in touch with me, it has to be through YouTube or my Facebook page or my website direct. You, I got a contact me page. But the trouble is I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. That's why I closed my Facebook group down because it was literally taking five, six, seven hours of my day just to answer people and I wouldn't get any work done. Uh, that's how many I get. So you have to bear with me. Um, I do try and answer most of the messages I have, but I have hundreds. So when you started watching me, my blogs on YouTube, George and Drinking Glasses, you now have 30 and love them. I've actually got two blogs. Um, I didn't even get around to doing a third because the um, view count was terrible. I done. Um, I was splitting them up. I done a vlog or a YouTube video on how to identify the feet and how to date drinking glasses off the feet. Then I done one on the stems. I was gonna do one on the bowls, so you had the full um, setup, so you could identify any drinking glass and date them all the way through from 1675 through to now. However, the view count and it, it took me, I think it was about six hours by the time I got the images and everything to make the video on the foot, similar on the stems. It just wasn't worth putting that time into the bowls when um, people just weren't watching it. So I didn't bother um, make the one on the balls, but I probably will get around to it when, I, uh, when I've got more time. Ah, that's the tiles, thank you. Yes, <laughs> they are nice, but you wouldn't believe how cheap they are, would you? Uh, but my first antique book and it's on tiles. There you go. Um, do you know, I really wanna know the tile I'm thinking of now. But I can't. There's one tile maker that pulls serious money. I just can't think of it. If I saw her, I'd know to buy it. But uh, yeah. And yeah, that is a huge price drop. Um, all the tiles used to go to America for £100 sterling and north. Um, and now you can see they're in here for £5 but to take a fiver. £7 to take a fiver. But if the antiques road trips end and go by, they'll offer me £2 instead of a fiver. Did I list the Dalton character jug from last week? Um, yes, I did list it on the website, and you are more than off, uh, welcome to go and view it and make me an offer. Um, they were pulling, I think it was 50, 60 pound on eBay, so I listed it something like 40 pound. Be welcome to make an offer. Um, I'm always happy to move the stuff on. Um, so use the contact, uh, contact me on the website, because the website doesn't actually contain make offer. You have to email me and make an offer, and I'll go from there. So I think that's the end of the chat. Um, I'm not going to really pull anything else out today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Uh, I'm gonna look, honestly, I appreciate everybody coming for the company. Um, I always get nervous with the live vlogs. I hate them. Um, when it's a pre-recorded, like if when I make mistakes and things, I can just edit it out. And you know, when I stop knowing what to say, and I, I'm, you know, I can edit all that out. On my, you know, when I just go quiet. Um, so yeah, I am really, really grateful. And of course I haven't been very well. I've had uh, migraines and everything for months. I am starting to feel better now. That's why I've started picking up the work again. Um, so yeah, hopefully fingers crossed, everything will keep going. Um, for everybody who've messaged me and wished me well, and even come to the shop and supported me since I've announced I'm shutting down and they've all been coming to say hello before I'm gone. Honestly, I can't thank you enough. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and I will, well, I've actually got a few um, videos already made. Um, I'm trying to think what I filmed last. I've got a few videos made anyway from Gethly Gay a while or two ago that I haven't even published yet. So they'll, I'll put another one out now in a couple of days. And I've got a load out the back room to film from the same lady as the lamp and the uh, pigeon clocks and things like that. I've got a whole heap out there, including a lot of glass bottles. So if you're interested in glass bottles, they're not old ones, but they're all the named like ginger beer bottles and card bottles and things like that. So they'll be in a, another video soon. 
So thank you very much, all of you. Honestly, I can't thank you enough. And I will speak to you all very soon. Bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed.